Hello, my name is Jason Reichel, and you're listening to Risk Management Brick by Brick. I'm fascinated with people who are helping build and maintain the physical world around us. On each episode of this podcast, we'll dive in with a risk manager, speak to them about how technology plays a role in this process. Hello, and welcome to Brick by Brick. I'm Jason Reichel. We're thrilled to welcome Bill Harris and Nicole Peck, two influential figures in the world of InsureTech. Bill, co-founder and chief customer officer at InsureTech Connect, and Nicole, an executive vice president of digital innovation at Clarion Events. You guys bring a wealth of knowledge uh, around technology, event management, and ITC is a conference that I look forward to every year and having great conversations. And so I thought it'd be great to get you on the podcast and talk about the upcoming show and figure out what it's all about and what people should be excited about. There's a lot of stuff happening in our industry. It feels like insure tech and insurance is moving at a, a rapid pace right now. So my first question to both Bill and Nicole, could you share how you got involved with ITC and what drives your passion for this industry? Yeah, I'll go first. Thank you, Jason. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, I got a call from uh, Jay Weintraub, who I had known uh, for many years, kind of out of the blue. It was very strange. And he said, hey, I'm starting this event. I had worked with Jay in digital advertising. I ran media buying at advertising.com hundred years ago. And Jay was one of my media buyers. So he calls me up and says, hey, I'm doing this thing. I was running a fintech. I'd started a fintech company. And he says, yeah, we're doing this insure tech thing. Have you heard of it? I said, yeah, it's like the extension of fintech, but for insurance. He says, yeah, and the guy named Caribou is an investor. And he's, he had the idea. He wanted to start an event. And he called me and I said, I knew a guy named Caribou. I went to college with a guy named Caribou. And so it was just a strange, crazy karma story. So I left my fintech company and jumped on the bandwagon with Jay and Caribou back in uh, early 2016. And they said, we're going to start this event. We're going to do it in, you know, in the fall, which was absolutely nuts because we spend a year planning this event every year. And had I known that, you know, they were trying to pull it off in six months, but I've been on the, at the bottom and on the rocket ship since, and we were lucky enough to bring on Nicole last year. I'll let her introduce herself. Jason, again, thank you for having us. I have been with ITC just over a year, as in a couple of weeks over a year at this point. I joined as president of the brand and joined ITC because it was a incredible career opportunity to lead probably one of the most innovative and smart teams on an event that's really pushing the envelope. And after spending 30 or years within the events, media, and sales space, this was a next opportunity for me and couldn't be happier to be here. One of the questions I have, because you were just talking about, what makes, in your opinion, and I know you guys are biased, but You know, there's a lot of events for this space. What makes ITC so different from your perspective? Or what are you trying to accomplish that you feel like makes it a a world-class event for people to attend? I'm going to actually take that one first, if that's all right, Bill. What sets ITC apart is at its core, it was founded to ensure deep connections were created between all of the participants at the event, all the stakeholders. And nine years later, that meeting, that core one-to-one meeting and opportunity to set up meetings right at the very center of the floor, it's one of the only events I've ever seen that actually puts a meeting zone in the very heart or very center of the show. And it is, the event last year, it was the first time I had ever seen an event that intense all three days of the show. Constant noise, constant meetings, constant interaction. And I almost said, wow, I didn't realize that the insurance industry was filled so with so many extroverts. It's wild to see that take place. I know Bill agrees with me, you know, at the core because he was part of the founding of the event, but I'm really proud that all these years later, that is in the DNA and, and continues to be a huge part of this event. I have to say how lively the event is not to shed a shade on any of the other events that I attend because I, I like each of them for different reasons. But one of the things that I like most is that it feels like a living event where people are doing their jobs and it so happens to be that you're at an event. And that greases a lot of 
interactions that you have with other events where it feels like an auxiliary thing where you're out of the office and when you come back and you have a whole, you know, plethora of work where ITC for me personally has always felt like an event where I'm going to accomplish big things. And, and I really appreciate that. That's not, I didn't know that was the core idea behind the event, but it, it definitely is very much felt. Yeah, no, it's definitely, and again, it's Caribou Honig who had the idea as a venture capitalist. He was like, I want to create deal flow. And he was very astute in saying, it's a matrix event. Usually events are like buyers and sellers. And what Caribou said was, we want to make sure we get the insurers, the innovators, the insure tech startups, and the investors together primarily, as well as the other solutions providers of various stripes, technology solutions providers, the you know consulting related solutions providers, brokers, agents, you name it. Like we want to get all the folks in the industry together to get together and talk because you know from his perspective, and people said this all the time, which has been really fulfilling. People say, I come to ITC and literally I get six months or even a year's worth of meetings done in three days. And then, like you said, Jason, you know, then I go back to my office and I've got all kinds of follow-up work. Again, it's that deal flow. Like, how do I get my business, no matter what business it is, how do I accelerate and grow my business? And there's really no better place, we think, in the industry than ITC, because so many people are there. It represents such the diversity of the ecosystem. You get the whole breadth of the ecosystem, as well as incredible depth of knowledge within the ecosystem. It's all right there. Nicole also said, you know, it's also just an experience. It's not just going to, you know, a trade fair, as the Europeans say. They were like, ah, oh, I'm just walking through booze and whatever. There's so much to do. There's so much to see. There's so much to eat. There's so much to drink. There's so much fun to be had at the event that it's really unlike any other. That brings up, you know, I think there are, for most events, there's thematic things that happen every year. What's, Bill, from your perspective, what's the primary theme and objective for this year's ITC conference? Yeah, we'll talk a little about the theme. It's, it's a very interesting theme this year. The theme for every year is connecting people, which is why we call it InsureTech Connect. We gave it a cosmic feel this year. We're, we're, it's a universe of possibilities is what we're calling it. And it's really just phenomenal. And you'll see that, that cosmic imagery, that space kind of theme really imbued throughout the event. Nicole, jump in and you know, Nicole's going to do a great fireside chat, for example, with someone really special. I'll let Nicole jump in. I would say, first off, Anna, the theme thematically and content-wise, generative AI is omnipresent throughout the entire conference. In every track available, it is deep discussions along that vein. As far as Bill said, the theme for the event is ITC, we always felt, has been at the frontier, right? At the beginning, pushing the frontier. So it's at the frontier of insurance innovation, right? The universe of possibilities. And as Bill said, we're really hoping that people feel joy and enjoy the experience from picking up their badge, you know, at the launch bay. You go to the launch bay to go pick up your badge this year, all the way through just special moments and treats that you know, does the Federato beer garden feel a little bit like the cantina from Star Wars? Maybe a little bit. Yes, it might. So there's going to be just possibilities around each corner and they're designed so that you smile, you laugh, you become that much more relaxed. You are in a good mood because fundamentally that shared experience is a memorable experience and you will remember the meeting that you had in the tea lounge that you know, felt like a, a hookah bar, you know, in outer space. So we're having fun, Jason. If I create another AI generated this morning, it was the carriers are coming, the carriers are coming. And I create the image of, you know, a woman on a horse in space. So it also really gives us something to keep coming back to as a team, as we're getting exhausted and in this run up, you know, just have a laugh fun bunk with each other. Like it's a chuckle for us. We're doing an interview with Captain Scott Kelly, who for a while was the longest person in space. He's an astronaut, NASA astronaut, brother of uh, Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona, right? As well as Nicole said, uh, generative AI, our other keynote speaker, one of our other keynote speakers is Zach Cass, head of go to market for open AI and is an AI futurist. So you want to talk about someone that really knows what's happening, especially in the gen AI space. We've got some amazing people and we're really, you know, like Nicole said, to getting 
deep into that theme of gen AI as well as, you know, the space theme. And there's so many things. Cyber has been such a big deal with insurance, you know, embedded insurance, all those other things still keep coming up as well. Autonomous driving is taking over San Francisco now. All those things will also be discussed as well. Yeah, my my daughter doesn't bat an eye now when a, a Waymo drives by without anyone in it. So yeah, totally agree. That brings me to every year at a conference, people want to know, how do you guys target and grow this thing with these strategies? And can you share some of the content that you think is going to be specific to maybe risk managers who might be listening to this podcast? What's some of the stuff that you guys are really excited about or that you think is going to be really unique and give them something to look forward to? From the content perspective, I mean, we're running uh, 14 stages, I believe at last Cal, you know, we have variety of tracks from, you know, property to innovation and action, claims, underwriting. So risk managers who practice risk management day to day, they're going to find a variety of topics to engage in. Do you suggest a track-based approach then that you pick a track and you, you follow that track to explore? And now you don't have to. Me. You don't have to. Again, we have so much breadth that you'll see people jumping between a variety of things, whether it's PNC or we have a whole life annuities and group benefits area as well. We actually, we built an entire like neighborhood within our expo hall. We're putting a stage there, you know, the key insure techs as well as carriers and other solutions providers will be in that area because what one thing at our size with over 9,000 people coming to the event for the last couple of years, it became hard for people to kind of find their flock and find, you know, what they're interested in. So what we, we wanted to do was create an environment where people in life annuities and group benefits could find themselves and separate a little bit from PNC people to talk. Brokers similarly have their own neighborhood, have their own lounge space have their own like exhibit area in the exhibit hall. The LATAM community, same thing. The innovators and startups are near the uh, demo stage and have, we're gonna have 200 startups in kiosks, like in, you know, exhibit, smaller exhibit booths right there so that they can be found and discovered and their innovations can be highlighted. So we really think about the layout and those types of things so that, you know, either carriers or investors or whomever can find, you know, what they're looking for, can find other people like them so that they can share those ideas. Cause that's what people really love about ITC. They're saying, you know, there are you know, thousands of carriers who are at ITC every year, brokers as well. And they want to get together and kind of, you know, share stories and kind of talk shop. And it's, we're trying to make it easier to facilitate those kinds of conversations for sure. Absolutely. I mean, I can say that ITC was a big influence on me deciding to host this podcast because I was having conversations in events and then leaving those events and not having that exchange of ideas that I think are really critical to influencing an industry that is as massive as the insurance industry, but can be as isolated as I'm doing this job every day in this specific niche. And to do that, I need to high focus, right? So I feel like these are really big uh, reasons to go to these events, to open yourself, uh, open up your aperture, right? And, and get a picture of what is happening in the industry that maybe you're not focused on in your silo or in your specific thing and get that exposure. You know, so many risk managers still don't have real programs for cyber. They still don't know how, what they're going to do about generative AI and how they're going to work that into their programs. And I think those are some of the things. Is there any innovation and technology that you guys personally are really excited to see be discussed or is a highlight for you yourself personally? That's a great question. I'm going to dodge the answer in that I'm excited for all of it, Jason, and it's going to turn down my mood in the given moment. I am going to give a bit of a tip for navigating our agenda this year in that we have the content tracks you had said earlier. Do you, you, know, do you suggest a track approach to the event? So you can this year not only select or view our content by track, but also by some content themes. So let's say you're specific to cyber or climate tech, or you want to understand just the generative AI session because they may be across multiple tracks at the event. You can go in and sort of sort by that thematic tagging. And we tag that content so that you can view it that way because you may be in the risk management track for one session 
And then you may be in the innovation and action track for something else. So I really want to encourage people to use the filtering opportunities on the website in advance of the event. And then after you become registered, that's all filterable through our app and utilize the app to really create that experience. Additionally, we created these pages on the site this year, which are targeted more towards specific roles or within the industry or segments. We've also put together content that we're recommending to you to that you should you should check out. So if you're an investor for say, as an example, coming into the event, we're going to give you recommended oppor- you know opportunities where maybe there is the state farm pitch competition taking place or there's the VC office hours happening. So we're we're really sort of giving you a bit of create your own journey, but we're helping you along. We're giving you some key stops along the way. Start with a party and also end with a party. Not, yeah, not to say that ITC has gotten criticism in the past that I've heard a lot of criticism, but any event that there's in, in Vegas, it's a big event. It's very easy to get lost. It's very easy not to know where to go next. So it sounds like you're using that same matrix approach, both in the tracking and then in thematics to allow people to customize what they need to get out of that event, you know, so that they can maximize their time there, which I think is absolutely the way that all conferences should go. Unfortunately, that's not the way they all end up going. What's really cool, Jason, I'm just going to jump in and say to you, is that this year our expo hall actually has, and Bill touched on this briefly, but neighborhoods. We've built neighborhoods into our show floor. And then the heart of each neighborhood is what we call our town square, which is called a lounge, right? A supercharged lounge. There are meetups that are scheduled to take place there. There are some activations happening. There might be some boozy ice cream happening in one of them. There's some really sticky elements and all of the solutions providers and exhibitors that surround that specifically are for, right, L&A and group benefits or they're specific to our ITC brokers or our LACTAM neighborhood. So it makes it really easy for the delegates to come through and find those solutions in one area. And that's often hard to accomplish at an event because sometimes you're like, I don't want to be next to my competitor. I'd like to be as far away as possible for them, where we've really encouraged friendly competition to say, make it easy and really create that community, that small community to provide a home base for people on the floor. Yeah, I love that. I, I, and it goes directly to what you said was the heart of the idea of having it be deal flow. Having those environments gives people the place and, yeah, the right kind of environment to have real conversations that are unique to them. And so many conferences, and, you know, I know that this is a big conference, but so many conferences wouldn't do that because you could fit 10 more booths in that area and sell that. And so I really appreciate that the connected part is something that you guys haven't lost as the conference has progressed. Moving to just a little bit around problems in the industry or issues in the industry. What are some of the biggest challenges that you currently see, Bill, that are facing the, you know, the insurance industry that you are hoping in the next, this year, you know, we're talking about some generative AI and technologies, but you hope that ITC can continue to be at the forefront of and, and help solve? Yeah, one thing we're doing this year, and it kind of ties into what Nicole just talked about with respect to our neighborhoods, is around uh, distribution. So we're doing uh, on our first day, our first day is Tuesday, October, 15th, and that's really our kickoff day. We're going to have strong content programs. We have a dozen or so content programs. And we're also having an event within the event on Tuesday. We call it ITC Agents. You know, insurance, I've always said, is sold, right? Insurance is sold, not bought. And the distribution network is so critical. And in the rise of insure tech, you know, back when we started out ITC, you know, eight years ago, everyone was saying, oh, you know, the agent's going to be disintermediated. We're not going to need agents. We're going to have artificial intelligence and all this other stuff. And technology is just, you know, you're not going to need an agent anymore. You're just going to be able to do it all from your phone. Not the case, right? So we are dedicating an entire really event to agents. And, you know, it's also partly from like our keynote speaker last year, Gary V, was talking about, you know, the growth hacking, how to grow your personal brand, how to grow your company. And that really applies tremendously to the people who are on the front lines selling and advising, you know, individuals or business owners or corporations or what have you, 
And that's the agent. So we're expecting you know, hundreds, probably 400, 500 or so agents to show up for ITC agents on Tuesday. And we're going to work with them. And we have an advisory board full of really expert people who have run agencies. We're going to talk about how to build your agency and how to improve distribution. Because that's something we've been hearing for years and years. You know, carriers come to ITC because they're like, I've got a great product. You know, I understand the market. I understand the need. I've got a great product. I need help getting that product into the market and into the hands of the consumers. So we see that across all lines. Absolutely. And not to, you know, on any of the big carriers, because I think they are doing good jobs in this, but for a lot of these other problem areas, niche players, niche agencies come in and help define the landscape there. And that distribution is really the difference between being able to be successful in those niche agency in those niche areas and grow or be an innovator and be dead by the time other agencies pick it up, right? And so I think that's really important having run agencies in the past myself. It's really critical for them to understand how to build that. So yeah, I do see that being a problem and value differentiating between agencies is also a problem that a lot of agencies are having that they often talk about on the podcast. And there's been so much consolidation also with, you know, just the bigger fish eating up the smaller fish. So all that is really key. And, you know, the average agent's 60 years old. They're trying to exit. They're trying to figure out, you know, they're trying to figure out what's this new AI-driven economy? You know, how do I essentially exit? And who's the right player? So all those things between the brokers program that we have, ITC agents also, you know, we're really creating a nice uh, landscape for all those conversations to happen. And, yeah, we're looking forward to that. That's the... It's an inaugural program for us for ITC agents, and we're really thrilled about that. Not to scare you, but you guys are less than, we're less than 30 days away from ITC, right? That's the real. What are some of the main priorities in the final stage of preparation for ITC? Like, what expectations do you have? Where are your heads at? I don't really want to know the answer. We're trying to book the Vimeo. Let's hear this one gets done in the lab, you know, in the, in the final weeks leading up to the event. The final catering orders need to be put in. So you're guessing because there are so many and register two weeks out from the show and one week out from the show. And I, I think that if people realize that there was food waste at play and we're trying to do our due diligence when it, as it relates to food, maybe people would commit earlier because we have to make real decisions that have to do with the number of lunches that get ordered uh, for a particular event. Uh, we are proofreading, you know, proofreading signage at a clip. We have videos uh, to approve and have uh, finalized for main stage. Rocio, our head of content, is still locking in a couple of key speakers for this event. Absolutely. Those people never turn in their decks on time. And someone, unfortunately, you know, family issues come up or whatever it is, so you're replacing. So the the two weeks that you asked the question, Jason, you're getting the, the real answer. Oh, I want that. I like all the details. I like all the dirt. The real answer is, you know, we're counting sandwiches right now. And, you know, and you take your best guess and you hope that you've done it correctly. We're also sending out a lot of invitations. Like we obviously host a lot of events, parties and what have you. We do a few things that are, you know, more exclusive things that like Nicole and I will host, but also our partners or people that come to ITC also are hosting literally dozens upon dozens of events. And they'll call us and say, Hey, I need a few people to come to my event. Can you help me out? So we even put that on our webpage. We have an ITC week page. that's you know, people will write into us and say, Hey, you know, can you help promote my reception, my happy hour, my dinner or whatever it is. So it's a lot of that. It's coordinating, helping people coordinate schedules as well, because there's so much to do. And someone has to coordinate my schedule. I require a handler, Jason. It is tough. It's an Excel spreadsheet and it is almost down to the 15 minute slots and increments. I appreciate the event and I appreciate supporting it. And I appreciate you guys coming on the cast to talk about it. I think that putting a face to these events and putting your guys' face specifically to this event just speaks to the heart of what this whole thing is was supposed to be about and it had been about. And, you know, I view it as a wild success and I'm looking forward to this. Any last questions about ITC before we move, or any other comments you want to make about ITC before we move on to risk or too risky? I would say the piece that I think we should mention is, because you talked about what are we looking to serve for the industry and what are some of the problems or challenges the industry is facing? And the industry is facing brain drain and retirement of individuals. 
So this is a huge opportunity for persons to find new jobs and to find new opportunities, new partnerships. So this is one of the pieces of advice I'd love to give, which is come ready for a new job. Come ready and prepared to talk to individuals because people are looking for staff at this event. People are looking to hire. And it's a huge job fair in many ways as well. Like when you get the community together, this is a community in forward progress in motion. So we do it. We do a ton of work with some of the university programs and master's programs. And we do try to provide opportunity for some of the students to be in attendance. We have some grad students presenting some really interesting findings with their professor, Amit, who is on our advisory board. We've got some great things happening, the entry type level. But Jason, like there are jobs to be filled and this is a great place to fill them. Absolutely. I could not agree more though. And one, there's two reasons why I started this podcast in the very beginning. One was I found the industry to be fascinating and the people who were part of it were not doing a good job of owning their own brand and getting their voice out there. And the second part of it is because the industry faces a real professional gap because the insurance industry has not been looked at as an innovation hub. And I feel like having been into it for a number of years now, that there is a lot of innovation that's happening and it's happening really quickly. And that makes me very excited. And I thought by sharing these stories with a broader audience, that people could be excited about the opportunities that are opening up. And I'm just so glad that you brought that up. So thanks, Nicole. Risky or too risky, let's get going. They're rapid fire questions to get to know you. This is also the part that everyone loves on LinkedIn. So risky or too risky, I'm going to go, I'm going to pick one so that you both don't have to answer them. I'm going to start with Bill. Risky or too risky, because I know where Nicole's background is, deciding to use only social media and online advertising for a major product launch and skipping traditional media completely. Is that risky or too risky? Yeah, I think that's risky for a traditional product launch. I say that because I have ink running through my veins. I used to also be in the newspaper magazine world. I still read the newspaper, paper newspaper every day. So that's risky for me. Nicole, accepting a large project that requires technologies your team has not mastered yet, is that risky or too risky? Risky. I will push the envelope on tech. I've known to be, I've known to do it and I'm doing it currently. Besides the horse flying through space, what's a piece of technology that you've used recently that you're like, I really need to get my hands around this? I think in general, it's most of the GPTs that I've used. Like the, I'm a pretty good prompter, but I think I can do a lot better. It's a full-time job. It's a full-time job, and I just had a seven-hour flight across the pond and had it write me a whole script and then sent it to Bill and said, Bill, I can't figure out how to actually implement this now. And Bill kind of got it going and said, Nick, I could do this quicker in Excel. What are we doing here? And I said, but it was so much fun to have it built for me. I've run into that many times. Bill, agreeing to a keynote at an event without prior public speaking experience, I guess this is a general thing, not just for you, but do you think people should commit to speaking at events if they haven't had public speaking experience? Risky or too risky, do you think? Yeah, that's, I think that's too risky. If you haven't had public speaking experience, that's crazy. You know, I've been speaking in front of big crowds since I was a little kid. I was the guy who always ran for like class president, elementary school, whatever. Actually, how I met my wife, small world. We were both running for class president of sixth grade. Did she win or did you win? I actually ended up winning. I had been there for the previous, since kindergarten. She was the new kid. So I squeaked it out by three votes. So small world. The right answer was I won because she's my wife. Doesn't matter about the sixth grade thing. So that was a trick question. I'm very comfortable in front of crowds and even, you know, stage like ITC where there are thousands of people in the room. Oh boy, you know, my heart's like, that's too risky not to be ready. Last one, Nicole here, maybe you've done this, investing in a startup without a proven revenue model, but with high growth potential, risky or too risky for your blood? Risky. What about you, Bill? Done that a couple of times. Didn't it always worked out well. Sometimes it works. That's the beauty of angel investing. Sometimes it works out great. Sometimes it doesn't. Not for ITC. ITC is going to work out great. Looking beyond this year, what is your vision for the next five years for the ITC conference? Going into the big vision question at the end. Usually I ask for, and you can give this one too, what's a piece of advice that you would give to someone coming into the industry? Or in this case, I'm kind of interested in what does ITC 15 look like to you? I wonder if ITC 15 is in a new city. That's a possibility. That's a big, bold statement. I see us going into four days, moving from what is a three-day event into a four-day event. World domination. Is there a better answer than that? 
No, world domination is the right answer. Bill, what about advice for someone coming into the industry that you would give, or maybe a first-time ITC goer? Because I think that would be interesting too. ITC First Timers program, we'll have webinars, we'll have tours, we have a event on site. So I encourage you guys to sign up for that if you're a first timer. Basically half of our audience, first timers to ITC, uh, give or take. So what I say is just come in, number one, with a very open kind of mind. It's a different event because of its size and scale. So I always tell people, just have a smile. Talk to the people that you like are standing next to in line for a coffee or at the beer garden or whatever. Just chat people up. And I know it's hard. I'm, I'm actually a, an introvert, right? And so it's interesting that I'm in this business because it's hard for me, but you have to smile, ask people about, you know, what are you excited about? And we're actually going to do some things to help ease those conversations. But yeah, come in ready to network, ready to have conversations with complete strangers. Because really that's the ethos of the event, right? It's about connecting people. And it's amazing how, after all these years, people say to me, like, I met, you know, some great people, like sitting on the shuttle bus between you know, the hotels and whatever, or s just, I sat down next to them at a banquet table for lunch. Cause that was the only spot available. And wow, you know, I ended up doing a deal with them or whatever. Just there are amazing connections that happen. And I also say, wear comfortable shoes. Great advice. Three people I met at ITC have been fundamental. I'm not going to name names on this, but they have been fundamental to my really embracing being part of the insurance industry. And all three of those people I didn't, I met just walking around, smiling, talking to you about what they're having for lunch. I think that you can really feel that the insurance industry is a relationship-based business at ITC. And that's why I'm super excited to be part of this and have you guys on the podcast. So thank you for creating a great event. And thank you for the time today. Thank you. Thank you. Risk Management Brick by Brick is brought to you by TrustLayer. Find out how TrustLayer manages risk so that the people can build the physical world around us. Head over to TrustLayer.io. And then make sure to subscribe to Risk Management Brick by Brick on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. On behalf of the TrustLayer team, thank you for listening. <laughs>